Okay, here's our next example for dividing polynomials, and we're up to the trickier type of problem because our divisor has two terms. We have an x plus 2, so we're definitely looking at two terms, an x and a positive 2. When we're dividing by a bi binomial, two terms, we need to set this problem up using long division. And our first move is to take this divisor, the x plus 2, and that goes out in front here. And the dividend, the x squared plus 5x plus 6, goes inside. And we have a long division problem set up. OK, so there it is. Uh, these problems are tricky, but half of the battle is just staying organized. If we can have a good organizational system, these problems become a lot easier. So the first thing I do to stay organized is I make these vertical lines here. I'm making columns. So I have a column for any term that has an x squared. They'll all go into this column. Any term that has a regular x is going to be in this middle column. And any just regular number is going to be in this third column. So just have these lines here just to stay organized. We'll talk about these as we work through the okay, Our first move is dealing with these terms that we have on the left. So if I look at the divisor, the x plus 2, the term that I have all the way on the left is this x right here. And if I look at the dividend, the term that I have all the way on the left is this x squared. So we are dealing with this x and this x squared. And all the others, these other terms you can just ignore for right now. We're just thinking about this x and this x squared. And there are a couple ways to think of it. We'll talk about a couple, and you really just need to figure out the one way that's working the best for you. What works for me at this part of the problem is I say to myself, this x times what, times something, is going to equal x squared. Uh, so this is sort of what I'm thinking about. x this x times something, I don't know what it is yet, should equal x squared. A different way you can think about it is not set up with a multiplication, but with a division going in reverse. So we would say this x squared divided by x. That's just another way for us to come up with what is this that's missing. Uh, so if I was to write that out, it would look like this with a division. x squared divided by x is what? So you don't have to really think about both of these ways. One or the other is going to be good enough to figure out what goes in this little box here or what our answer would be. Either way, we're hopefully seeing that it's x. OK, so there's the first part of our answer. And we are writing parts of our answer up here on top. And notice where the x went, because this is a term that has just a regular x. It went in this column for all other terms that have just a regular x. So we put it above the 5x. And that's just part of my way of staying organized through these problems. OK, once we have put a, a term up in our answer, the very next move is, I just cleared that work out of there. Our very next move is to multiply back down. And we definitely, when we multiply back down, we need to do it twice. And this is the, the first part in the problem where we're actually dealing with this too. We haven't thought about it until now. This is our first time thinking about how do we deal with this too. And it comes into play when we do this multiply back down. So the x multiplied back down to that x is going to give us an x squared. And the x times the positive 2 will give us a positive 2x. So there's the x times x is x squared, and I have it in the column for all terms that have x squares. The x times a positive 2 gives us a positive 2x, and I have that in the middle column. The next move is to do a subtract. What I like to do when it comes to subtracting polynomials is I flip signs and add. And really, the reason I do that is to stay accurate. When we start having a term here and we have to subtract negatives, it's easy to go off path. So I've decided that what helps me when I get to this part, which is a subtract, I flip signs and add. And that's helping me do these problems accurately. So we made this x squared into a negative x squared. We make the positive 2x into a negative 2x. And then we add. These guys cancel. A positive x squared with a negative x squared cancel. Positive 5x with a negative 2x gives us our positive 3x. And our next move is going to be, let's bring down the positive 6. 
okay that was basically one round through this problem and now we're going to do a second round through the problem and it's going to be uh, instead of dealing with this x and that x squared now we're dealing with this x and this 3x we're still sort of thinking that at the beginning of each round we deal with the terms that are all the way on the left so we're still still dealing with this x and now what we have most on the left is this 3x so we're asking ourselves the same questions like x times what equals 3x or if you're thinking if you prefer to think like divide it would be 3x divided by this x equals what so it's this sort of idea is are you gonna think x times what equals 3x or other people prefer to think of it like this 3x divided by that x is going to give us our answer. Either way, we're hopefully seeing that it is a 3. Whole number 3, no x needed, x, 1x, with that 3 is going to give us the 3x. And if you look at it with the divide, you can see the x's will cancel and give us that 3. That's the next part of our answer. Where does that part of our answer go? It goes up on top. And it is going in this column for any terms that are just numbers with no variables. So in this the very last column is where we have our positive 3. What is the very next step? As soon as we put an answer on top, multiply back down twice. So we need to take this positive 3, multiply it back down to the x, and multiply it back down to the 2. And we'll be writing our results on this next line. There it is. This positive 3 times x is 3x. The positive 3 times 2 is 6. We're ready for the subtract, but we like to, when we have to subtract, like to flip the signs and add. So we made it a negative 3x with a negative 6, and when we do our add, those cancel, and those cancel. So we have a 0 left over. We don't have anything else to bring down, this zero is our remainder. There's no remainder. And so where do we find the answer for a long division problem? It's right up here, x plus 3. So there's our answer, x plus 3. This is a good sort of straightforward answer in the problem, and it's, it's showing us our main steps that we have to do with these long division problems. So uh, our next example is one for you to try. So you're going to put this video on pause and work through this problem. It's going to be a long division problem. If you need to go back to the beginning and follow along with the steps to see how we're going to do this one, by all means, please do that. Uh, so take a few, work this problem, and then come back to this screen, and I'll be showing you the answer, hopefully you are coming up with for your answer, x plus 3. That was a coincidence that, it, again, it was an x plus 3. Um, so that ought to be your answer. Let's keep going with